as some of you know, and as some of you probably also don't know, I was in China a week ago, and when I came back from China, I realized that I know absolutely nothing about China. So I sat down and tried to inform myself um, about the ancient history of China, really focusing on why the hell were there so many dynasties and what happened to them. And I'm gonna try and somehow put this in this video. So let's start way back. The Bose Basin is a Paleolithic site in China where fossils were found in a cave that may be two million years old. The archaeological site of Xihondu has the earliest recorded use of fire by the Homo erectus, which is dated back 1.27 million years ago. So you could say China was already pretty lit back then. <laughs> BC, early Chinese settlers started cultivating rice around the Yangtze River, also building small villages there as well as the Yellow River. And with agriculture came increased population and BAM! 2070 BC, the first dynasty was born. The Xia dynasty is often kind of talked about as like a mythical dynasty because there's not a lot of clear evidence that it ever existed, but <laughs> and according to ancient records, the dynasty went down around 1600 BC in the legendary battle of Mingqiao, where the Xia clan fought the Shang clan. Well, you gotta know that the Sia, the Sia clan was at that time led by the Xi of Sia, who was apparently a huge dick. Um, the picture you're looking at right now is him with a halberd representing oppression, and he's sitting on two ladies representing his abuse of power. He also didn't really cope well with criticism at all, so when the throne was passed down to him, the Sia clan lost a lot of power, which gave the Shang clan the opportunity to stop him. That put the Shang of Tang... 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 The Tang of Shang on the throne. His name is Tang of Shang, not Shang of Tang. Um, <laughs> which, with that, the Shang dynasty was born! Wow! Um, he was apparently also a really nice dude. He lowered the taxes and also the conscription rate of soldiers. Um, while the Shang dynasty existed, uh, 31 kings ruled over it and the capital city was moved six times so it in total lasted from 1600 till 1046 BC and it was also referred to as the Bronze Era information. The last king of the Shang dynasty was the Zhu of Shang, which started out as a great guy. He apparently could kill wild beasts with his bare hands and he was so smart that he would win every argument. He ended up being a drunk that would host festive orgies with his mistress Daji, whom he liked very, very much. Just for her, he invented the burning cannon punishment, where there was like a large hollow cylinder, bronze cylinder, and that was filled with red hot charcoal, and then the victim was made to hug it, burning them slowly and painfully. And apparently, Zhu and his mistress Daji got quite horny watching such torture. The victims ranged from prisoners to ordinary people to high government officials and to somehow finance his expensive lifestyle of partying and bitches and alcohol, he had to raise the taxes extremely, basically throwing all of his people into poverty. So when the Battle of Muyi started, which was a battle between the Shang army, so this is the Zhu of Shang's army, and the Zhu army, which is the Wu of Zhu's army, which is not the same guy, uh, 170,000 
of the Shang army's slaves switched over to the Zhu army and therefore the Wu of Zhu had an easy game and killed them all! <laughs> Farmer King Zhu of Shang then sadly sat down in his palace and lit it on fire as he would. 1046 BC the western Zhu dynasty took over and after just three years Wu of Zhu died and got replaced by his son Shang of Zhu which was just a baby boy when he got announced as king so that Duke of Zhu helped him out which was the brother of the former king and the uncle of Shang. Uh, he was also commonly known as Dan, which I will use now, this name, because otherwise I'll get way too... There's too many names, man. Too many, too many zoos of Shang. Dan was also a huge fan of the Mandate of Heaven, which was a belief system that basically said that the heaven would punish the bad kings and reward the good kings to let them reign as, as long as they live. Dan used this to legitimize Shang as a new king because he was like, well, this is a sign heaven wanted you to have a new king because your old king was corrupt and not really nice. So this is why Shang is here. So don't question it, okay? Uh, it also kind of changed the way that the people would look at natural disasters because now it was heaven commenting on, on the current king. So, for example, if an earthquake would occur, it was basically heaven saying, You are bad king, do better! The last king that ruled over the Western Zhu dynasty was King Yu of Zhu. He ruled from 795 till 771 BC. And in 779 BC, a young lady entered his palace. Apparently this woman had quite the history. So the legend says that while the Sia dynasty was still existing, two dragons flew into the palace of the king. And for some reason, I don't know. They left her behind a lot of saliva, which the king, for some reason, put into a wooden box. A thousand years later, some stupid king tried to open one of those wooden boxes, and a little bit of dragon saliva spilled on the ground, forming a black lizard, which ran towards a seven-year-old girl just standing there, and apparently he wasn't wearing his eye condoms because the seven-year-old girl, eight years later, birthed a child, a little baby girl. And she was quite confused by it, because she was a virgin, which would also explain why she just left that baby behind. But she just left that baby behind. And a cute couple found that baby, raised her up, and her name is Bao Si. And Bao Si entered uh, King Yu's palace in 779 BC. That would be crazy if she like entered it like a million years later. <laughs> <laughs> they fell in deep, deep love and birthed a child named Bofu. They were so happy besides the issue that King Yu already had a wife and child, which he then, to solve this issue, decrowned and he called Bao Si and the little Bofu the new queen and crown prince. Bao Si apparently didn't laugh that easily and King Yu would try almost everything to get a giggle out of her. So one day he lit up the warning beacons which were commonly used to inform the nobles around the palace that the Ku and Rong nomads were attacking. So the nobles thought that that was happening so they traveled all the way to the palace to open the doors and then just see Bao Si laughing her butt off and King Yu just being happy that his freaking woman was finally <laughs> laughing. He did that several times, which really, really pissed the nobles off. The father of Yu's former and also actual wife, Queen Shen, was kind of mad and furious that King Yu just decrowned his daughter and grandson. So he got together with the Kuan Rong uh, nomads and attacked the palace. Now, of course, as soon as King Yu saw that, he ran to the warning beacons and lit them up. But no one came, because the nobles thought he was kidding again. So King Yu and his beloved son Bofu 
got murdered and yeah, Baozi got captured. So it's 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 basically the the Chinese version of the boy who cried wolf. The first child of the King Yu and also former crown prince, uh, Jiju, was then called King Ping of Zhu, and the capital city was moved from Haoying to Luoyang since Haoying was destroyed by the Qurong. And even though Ping's grandpa had sided for them for a while, they were still potentially dangerous, so they moved to Luoyang, and therefore we now are at the Eastern Zhu Dynasty. That is also the dynasty in which Confucius was born. He was a teacher, philosopher and politician of the spring and autumn period, which corresponds roughly to the first half of the Eastern Zhu period and got his name through the spring and autumn annals, which were written by Confucius and later Mencius, documenting events from 722 to 481 BC. These records are events such as marriages, deaths, funerals, battles, and natural disasters, with the longest entry only being 47 characters long. It's still in question if uh, these were intended as chronicles for future human readers, so like us, or if these were directed to the ancestral spirits. The last king of the Zhu dynasty was King Nan of Zhu. He didn't have much power and the rising Chinese states ignored the king's activities and adopted royal titles and rituals for themselves. The Waring States period is a period where everyone was trying to be the most powerful. In the end, Qin took over East Zhu and everything else. The fall of the Zhu dynasty was hardly noticed by the people and states of China. And with that, we exit ancient China. Next stop, Imperial China. If you guys wanna see a video on that, please do comment below. I know this is not a video that anyone would have ever expected of me, I guess, but here you go. <laughs> I wish you all a beautiful day and see you next time. Bye. <laughs>